Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful Red Admiral butterfly on a Buddleia flower and I'm going to be using our new set of handmade watercolour paints. It's our second collection so I'll be trying them out and demonstrating them here for you. If you're interested in looking at our watercolour shop and also in Morgana Rose Arts demonstration which also uses the same new collection of watercolours to paint this amazing landscape or seascape here then please follow the links below to Morgana Rose Art Etsy shop and to Morgana Rose Art here on YouTube to watch her demonstration but for now I'll introduce you to the colours that I'll be using from our new collection I'm using spring green um, ultramarine blue from the previous collection and permanent yellow. So I'll be using these to paint the background and then be using um, the rest of the colours from the co collection to paint the butterfly and the buddleia. So I'm starting off, um, I've masked out the lighter areas or colourful areas on my um, butterfly and my buddleia little florets. And now I'm just lightly spraying across my painting, which is flat um, on my board, um, not at an angle. I'm keeping it flat today and I'm lightly spraying it with my misting spray. Now, this is my spring green. If you don't have our spring green, then you can, of course, use um, sap green or you can use any sort of nice bright green that you like, a nice fresh one. Um, you can mix a green probably from cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue and I'm going to just brush it lightly across the page going over the masking fluid areas. I don't mind if I go over the butterfly a bit because its body is quite dark and then I'll be introducing some of this beautiful permanent yellow which is so richly pigmented. Um, even though I'm working from small pans or half pans, um, which is the way that we sell our paint, um, they wet up beautifully and my small harky brush fits perfectly into the pan and spreads this paint around really nicely, especially when I use the, the misting spray. And you can see I've now raised my board up to 45 degrees and the paint's running down beautifully and giving me some fantastic wet in wet background effects which I can enhance here and there with the brush, pulling it across the page, just blending it, making sure it goes all around those masked out areas. One thing that we are very happy with is how highly pigmented our paints are. They're made with artist quality dry pigments and binders and a bit of preservative and you can see how strong they are. They're really beautiful. A little bit goes a long way and gives you such rich, transparent colours. So that's a bit more of our spring green. And now I'm using the ultramarine blue just to darken certain areas up a bit around underneath the butterfly, behind the butterfly, and around the sort of lower part of the Buddleia flower so that I end up having a lighter area across the top of the painting and a darker area across the bottom. And as soon as my wash looks how I want it to, without looking overworked or muddy, I lay it flat and let it dry. Now here's the dry painting and I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. And you can of course use any brand of watercolours for this or any yellows, greens and blues that you like. And now I'm going to show you the rest of the paints that I'm going to be using for this. So across the bottom, starting from the left, I'm going to be using Mineral Violet, Permanent Orange. Those are from the new collection. And I'm going to be using um, Burnt Umber and Vermilion from um, the first collection. So the first job is to remove all the masking fluid. Now the painting is completely dry. Now I can use an eraser and rub away and remove it that way, or I can use a clean finger um, and rub it all off. The reason I've used so much here is because I want to keep the colours nice and pure for the violets for the Buddleia. Um, 
it's a darker colour than the background, but I think if you put the purple on top of um, yellow and green, you can sometimes get a sort of browny hint coming through because, of course, watercolours are transparent. So by placing the violet shades and purple tones and hues onto the clean white paper that I preserved with the masking fluid, you can see that I'm getting this beautiful, pure colour, which is what I'm looking for, um, to give this painting um, some real pop against that very blurry, indistinct background. So I penciled in my sort of little buddlier florets very loosely and now all I'm doing is um, dotting through with my small calligraphy brush or you can use a small round brush, a detail brush, a rigger, anything like that. Um, just to dot and dash and build up darker areas and lighter areas um, where the some of the florets are closer together and you can see the green through the florets which I think is quite attractive, the green and the yellow background. And I'm layering up with richer mineral violet in some areas and that's giving me sort of shape and form even though I'm keeping these very very loose. Um, I used a misting spray just lightly to spray the paper so some of it was wet some of it was dry and you can see that I'm getting some gentle diffusions in some places but keeping some nice hard edges uh, where I'm painting onto the dry paper as well. So the larger areas, I used my Polina Bright number no. one round, um, a synthetic round for that. And now I'm back to my small, small calligraphy brush. And I forgot to mention that I've only removed the masking fluid from the Buddleia florets. I've left the masking fluid on the bright spots and areas of my butterfly. I'll remove that a little bit later, but I want to get the butterflies uh, wing, wings and body painted first and it's easier to do that with the masking fluid there. So my buddly is now finished as far as I want to go with it. Um, the buddly is nice and dry and so now I've mixed up my burnt umber. Um, first of all I'm just lightly wetting the body. That means that when I put the paint in it will sort of flow um, through the body, my board's at an angle of 45 degrees, so the paint will sort of run down towards the bottom where the butterfly's body is in shadow a bit more, so that will help the paint to run down and give me a slightly darker tone there. So now I'm going to draw the Polina Bright round brush across carefully across the shape of those wings. You can see I'm going across the masking fluid and you can see where those markings will be. Um, so I'm following the shape and directionality of the top pair of wings first. And this is again burnt umber. I can darken up that burnt umber in a bit with some ultramarine blue and get some slightly darker shades in. Um, and here's that darker, richer umber with a bit of blue just to sort of really darken it up nicely for the tips of the wings, getting that sort of Maybe those sort of slightly sort of veiny look. I'll, I'll see if I can get that by lightening up some areas and darkening others. But we're just setting the scene here on this Red Admiral butterfly for the beautiful um, white and orangey red markings, which I'll put in as soon as I've got the body right. I think this is the first time that I've ever painted a butterfly, but I just got the urge to do so because I thought it would show these beautiful spring colours off so beautifully. You can see I've lifted out a little bit of colour there for the veins on the wings. And then darkening up the tips of the wings even more.
and then just a slightly darker bit to the end of that body. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that to dry completely and as soon as it's dry I can remove the rest of the masking fluid. There's a bit of masking fluid on the antennae so I shall rub that away first. I want those to look quite delicate. And then, of course, the butterfly has to be completely dry. Um, and best to just check that there's no damp or wet paint still on the latex masking fluid, because you don't want to sort of smudge these areas that you've preserved. Now, I've just spotted that I'd forgotten a little bit of buddleia here behind the butterfly's wing. So I'm just carefully using the mineral violet to put in just a hint of a few florets just peeping out above the butterfly's wing. And I think that helps to balance out the composition really nicely. I'm being careful not to paint over my uh, where I've just removed the masking fluid. So now... Um, the outer areas are going to be left the white of the paper, the little spots and lines at the tips of the wings. But this is permanent orange, which is such a gorgeous colour. So I'm painting it into these bands, very distinctive um, bands for the Red Admiral. And they will go on both sides of the wings. And then once I've got that beautiful orange in, I'm going to add a touch of vermilion here and there, just to add some depth and richness to that orange. Just touching it into the permanent orange while the paint is still wet, and it'll just wet blend gently and just give me that beautiful rich color that I'm looking for with a bit of variation. And again, across the tips of the bottom wings. And once that permanent orange and vermilion is dry, I'll be able to go back in and put in just four little spots in each lower wing. But for now, it's permanent orange first, really richly applied to get that lovely color. And then the vermilion, just to pull out some deeper highlights. So that's all the bands done. Um, I need to do a little bit of um, outlining just to um, bring out those white tips a bit more. But now I'm just going to use a bit of this dark colour, which is the burnt umber and ultramarine blue on the tips of the antennae. Um, and then going to just sort of lightly dot on the antennae themselves so that it's just a delicate suggestion of those antennae. I don't want them to look too clumsy. And now just a few finishing touches to really darken up the, um, the tip of the body there and put in a few sort of like suggestions of some segmentation. Um, and then using the tip of my calligraphy brush, just outlining the white tips a little here and there, um, just to bring that butterfly completely into focus around the edges. You can see I left those tiny white areas um, around where the red bands are at the bottom and those are what I've outlined now just to finish off um, the look of the butterfly. And lastly, just dropping in a few tiny ultramarine centres into some of the larger flowers um, that are in shadow just beneath the butterfly, just to add that slight bit of variation and that slight change in tone.
and then four dots once the vermilion and permanent orange bands are completely dry, four um, dark dots in the burnt umber and ultramarine blue mix. And now i am finished my painting, I can remove the tape and have a look at it with its clean white border which will kind of allow me to look at it with fresh eyes and I can see whether or not um, I think it's finished. And I think I'm quite happy with this, but what I'm happiest about is how beautifully the second collection of our handmade watercolour paints have performed here. Um, lovely, rich, deep, deeply pigmented colour, but subtle effects as well as quite dramatic ones too. So um, if you are interested in taking a look at our paint, don't forget to check the link um, in the description below to Morgana Rose Art Etsy shop and also please take a look at um, Morgana's demo which is completely different from mine where she looks at um, the landscape and uses the paint in a much subtler way than I have here. I mean I've shown it in, in all its sort of sunny glory but Morgana's landscape um, shows that you can use these paints to create really subtle effects too. And of course, um, you can of course use any brand of paints to um, try out these two demos, mine and Morgana's, um, and I hope you enjoy painting them. Well, I hope you liked that and you liked the paintings that I did and Morgana's painting too. Please pop over and leave her a like and subscribe to her channel too for more updates and wonderful tutorials. And thanks to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.